Good afternoon. You'll notice that there, there's a theme here in that uh, there's, uh, there's concern for the public, for those that have been injured um, by the Kenosha Police Department, those injured by civilians, and the injuries inflicted upon the community itself by arsonists, Molotov cocktails, looting, all of the violence that goes on. So uh, I want to be very clear with that. Everybody that stands before you is very committed to bringing a peaceful resolution to the issue at hand. We understand there are underlying issues that are driving this. We're not going to fix them overnight, but the commitment is here from the leaders here to do something about it. So with that, uh, there's a clear understanding that Kenosha is full of good people. Kenosha is not a community of violent people. The residents here are sad, they're scared, they're confused, but they're not violent. Peaceful protests are welcome. It is a way, it has always been a way for the American public to speak their mind. We support that, I support that as an individual. We cannot support violence. When the line crosses, stating one's opinions to taking violent actions and, and hurting people, damaging property and generally unruly behavior that that must stop it not only is it bad for the community it detracts from the message the message here the underlying message is about racial tension and police violence whether or not that's a contributing factor whether it is here in kenosha and across the nation those are issues that need to be worked on and addressed when things become lost it becomes all about violence and that, that's clearly not what Kenosha is about. The, this, the people here are good people, and we're here to protect them. We've called in necessary resources to do that, and we will continue to do that to stand strong to protect all people here in Kenosha. So by now, everybody is aware that the Kenosha Police Department, uh, one of our officers, shot an individual here in the city of Kenosha, which is the, for lack of a better term, the event that triggered the unrest. Thankfully, Mr. Blake is alive and recovering from that, that incident. Um, I don't have a lot of great details about the incident because I wasn't there. The, uh, the state of Wisconsin has a, a statute and a procedure that removes the law enforcement agency in, involved in the use of force from the investigation. So you heard Sheriff Beth speak about how they came in in a supporting role. They controlled the scene to control evidence to protect the scene, to make sure that justice would be served in the end. No matter what that evidence showed, that was his job. The Kenosha Police Department steps back from that, and we become the people investigated rather than those doing the investigation. That is a recent change statutorily here in Wisconsin, one that I support, and I believe it adds transparency and uh, a greater um, oversight by some. Unfortunately, what that also brings is what you see before you today a chief who doesn't have details about the incident. So the Wisconsin Department of Justice Criminal uh, Division of Criminal Investigation, or DCI, is the investigating agency here. They are the ones who are collecting evidence, interviewing all those involved, whether it's the officer, Mr. Blake, witnesses, any host of things. They're the ones doing the, in the investigation to give it that outside view, that outside demand for justice. So I support that, and uh, we will continue to uh, um, participate in that cooperation. They will continue doing what they need to do. Um, but again, I, I don't have details to share because of the way the system works. The, uh, the support process here with DCI for us is very limited. The Sheriff's Department controls the scene. I, as a chief, have policies. We have procedures to cooperate. And that is what we do. We're not hiding behind what has been referred to by some across this nation over the years as a blue line of silence. It doesn't exist. We, we don't want bad cops. There, there aren't cops here who want to go out and hurt people. right? So I, I understand that there's a difference of view, and there may be some underlying political issues that, again, as I said before, are not going to be solved. Um, I, I ask for everybody in this room, everybody listening, and the citizens here that are affected to allow for time for that process to play out. The decisions in that case will be made based upon evidence collected by an outside agency presented to somebody else to make that decision. 
the Kenosha Police Department will not come out and make a ruling one way or, in, or the other in that. So that process is in place. I believe it's fair, and I believe it's, it's a good thing for not only the citizens of Kenosha, but those across this nation. Since the incident, there have been peaceful protests and prayer vigils. There's a lot of good people out there, and there are a lot of good people who want to draw attention to underlying issues, to draw attention for the need for change, and to draw a line, or draw attention to the need for the potential for police reform, if necessary. And I bring that last statement into effect in that I think most people I've talked to believe that there may be the need for reform, but they're not racing to judgment. They will bring up ideas, and much of it is of what we've talked about or I've heard from, from citizens are at place. They do exist. There's just perhaps not enough communication. And th today's meeting is somewhat about that. So you have my commitment that we will try to do our best to share more information. It's just difficult when you're removed from the process to do that. So I, I ask, again, that as we move forward, that today's theme is about progress toward restoring healing and having a community that comes out of this stronger. Um, so over the last few days, Kenosha has also experienced, unfortunately, looting, arson, Molotov cocktails, violence, persons injured. In addition, last night, in, in a situation that began peaceful and, and turned somewhat unruly, and it, the, the sheriff spoke about things that were thrown, hammers, bricks, <coughs> violence toward law enforcement, and for the National Guard who assisting and controlling judgment, or con controlling the, uh, the scene here and protecting those who were rightfully speaking their mind, persons who were out after the curfew became engaged in some type of disturbance and, and persons were shot. Everybody involved was out after the curfew. I'm, I'm not going to make a great deal of that, but the point is the curfew is in place to protect. Had persons not been out involved in, in violation of that, perhaps the situation that, that unfolded would not have happened. Um, so the last night, a 17-year-old individual from Antioch, Illinois, was involved in the use of firearms to reserve, to, excuse me, to, uh, to resolve whatever conflict was in place. The result of it was two people are dead. This is not a police action. This is not the action, I believe, of those who set out to do protests. It is, it is the persons who were involved after the legal time involved in illegal activity that brought violence to this community. So last night, unfortunately, a 26-year-old Silver Lake resident and a 36-year-old Kenosha resident lost their lives to this senseless violence. A 26-year-old West Dallas resident was also injured but is expected to survive. This, this case is still very active. We have investigators out now uh, still following leads and then and doing what we can to bring around, uh, excuse me, to bring about a closure to that. The names of those involved are not being released at this time. As I said, it's a very active investigation, and uh, we, we have a person in custody out of state. I'll be working to bring that person to Wisconsin to, to face appropriate charges. What I can't tell you is what led to the disturbance, that led to the, the use of this person, and if both deaths are related to the same person. I don't know that at this point. Investigation, as I said, is, is very new. So we'll do what we can to get more information as it becomes available. simply isn't available at this time. So the Kenosha Police Department is working in concert with outside agencies to address the Kenosha County residents' concerns. But we are currently the focal point for much greater issues. We will do our part to try to be an example how we can resolve those. And I will, I will take complete ownership of the lack of media releases. So in the last five days, I have probably slept three hours. The demands that are placed upon the police department, the police chief, and all of its resources sometimes make this role take a back seat where I'm concerned with the protection of citizens rather than providing information. I will do a better job with that. So, so with that, I ask for your support in healing here and across this nation, and we all together can and should make a difference. Thank you.